talked on yesterday's uh, special Sunday show that Kevin McCarthy had reached an agreement with Biden to raise the debt ceiling. Now, this will still have to go through the House and Senate. We'll still have to see this passed. Uh, it seems likely that that could happen, but I want to walk you through kind of a lot of the backlash we've seen from some within the Republican Party, especially, but some within the Democratic Party as well. As we discussed yesterday, Pramila Jayapal says Biden and the Democrats do need to be worried about this getting through um, because of the progressive caucus and the concerns, rightfully so, that progressives have about this. Now, I do think, considering the circumstances of this deal, is not as bad as I expected and it should go ahead and get passed. Um, I think Biden did a pretty good job negotiating down a lot of what uh, the GOP wanted to less detrimental things. Absolutely. And I think credit should be given to Biden for that, but we're dealing with the MAGA Republican party. So of course any compromise is going to end up being bad, but less bad <laughs> in this situation than I expected. So let's go ahead and uh, walk through some of the GOP's response to this, at least those who are against it. Ted Cruz wrote, um, to a clip about Speaker McCarthy saying Hakeem Jeffries doesn't feel like there's one thing in this deal for Democrats. And Ted Cruz responded to a clip uh, of that saying, he's right. There's not one thing for Dems. There are, are four trillion dollars of things, a blank check for Democrats, plus 87,000 things, new IRS agents to harass Americans, all in exchange for eliminating virtually all the House's spending cuts. And before I walk through more, what is really fascinating is uh, that it seems to have backfired on Kevin McCarthy and Republicans to have tried to combine the debt ceiling negotiation or raising the debt ceiling, I should say, and budget negotiations. Because the urgency of the moment with raising the debt ceiling, it seems kind of forced Republicans to get less in the negotiations over the budget and some of these spending cuts they wanted to get, then maybe they could have if they had not attached the two um, the two issues. But uh, Ken McCarthy obviously would, would say otherwise. This is Rand Paul, another senator, Republican senator. Fake conservatives agree to fake spending cuts. Deal, a deal will increase mandatory spending around 5%, increase military spending around 3%, and maintain current non-military discretionary spending at post-COVID levels. No real cuts to see here. And then you have Lauren Boebert saying, our base didn't volunteer, door knock, and fight so hard to get us the majority for this kind of compromise deal with Joe Biden. Our voters deserve better than this. We work for them. We can count, uh, I should say, you can count me as a no on this deal. We can do better. And then we'll get to Ralph Norman and a clip of him responding in just a moment. But I am happy to see that MAGA Republicans and uh, some within the GOP caucus in the House and Senate are unhappy with this because that means they didn't get something big. And I walked through the specifics of the deal yesterday as more... Uh, details come out it seems to fall in line with the reporting that i went through yesterday so you can check out that clip um, on the youtube channel if you're interested one of the big concessions they got was uh an expansion of work requirements for snap which is bad i don't like that that's happening but also homeless individuals and veterans were protected and um, access was was given there to snap without those work requirements um and a few other things, but they wanted to go after Medicaid. They weren't able to touch Medicare and Social Security. They wanted to cap spending levels uh, back to 2022 discretionary spending levels, which would have caused massive cuts. They they just didn't get so many of these different things, and that's good to see. And that's why this anger in the response from some of the, especially MAGA Republicans, is uh, hopeful to me because I do think it, it'll still be able to get through because of enough people who aren't the ones we're going to walk through here, getting on board with it. Of course, in the House, you just need that simple majority. Um, and then here's Republican Representative Ralph Norman getting asked about this, and he's also negative on the subject. We just heard uh, in, in the report from Chad Pergram uh, that Hakeem Jeffries, the Democratic minority leader in the House, is saying there's nothing in this bill for him, for his party. <laughs> 
Well, it's, it's not. He wants to just spend, continue to spend the taxpayers' money. And we're just going to say, no, that's not what the American people elected us for. When you can't have work requirements. It depends on what you're spending the taxpayers' money on. And I will say again, the Democrats have a better record on debt and deficit. When you can't, we've gone through the specifics of that in the past. Have work requirements. I mean, imagine that. Uh, when you hire the 87,000 IRS S agents, and we don't cut that. Uh, when you raise the debt ceiling to four trillion and put it past the uh, presidential election, no, that's not what we sent Kevin to uh, to negotiate. Now, in fairness to him, he's done a good job so far. But when we we're all going back, we're going to scrutinize the hundred pages, and uh, if it's what I'm hearing. Uh, no, we're not going to give a corrupt administration, as the hearings have shown, the keys to the vault, uh, you know, for and raise the debt ceiling. Uh, like okay, so he's just kind of wandering around there. Uh, but he mentioned the 87,000 IRS agents. I am so sick and tired of that talking point and people who should support the action of funding the IRS more. Um nodding along yeah oh biden's horrible he wants to fund the irs more to go after conservatives no stop it all those working class republicans who support individuals like ralph norman and trump and all of that and they hear this talking point snap out of it the funding of the irs is for the purpose of going after tax cheats specifically wealthy tax cheats so we would be getting more in tax revenue than it even took to fund, uh, than the increase of funding even was. We'll get more back in tax revenue. We'll make a profit on this type of policy because we'll get more money from those who can afford it. And this has become a priority. Now, the Republican voters hear the talking point of Biden wants to go after MAGA, and that's what they think the GOP is fighting on. That's why they're trying to decrease the funding to the IRS, and they got $10 billion to be um, decreased out of the $80 billion increase in funding um, as a part of this agreement, not the entire thing, which is good to see. But a lot of voters will think, okay, good, they're, they're fighting against Biden's attempt to come after me, when in reality... The GOP is just, and I wish, I wish some conservatives would hear this, look into the facts and then believe it. They just work to make the wealthy more wealthy and powerful more powerful. And that's why they don't want the IRS to have the resources necessary to go make this country and the government money by getting more back in tax revenue than it took to fund and uh, going after those who can afford it, the super wealthy who should be paying that amount. They're cheating out of their taxes. It's totally justified to go get that money. And it would, in theory, lessen the tax burden or at least more properly fund programs and bring in, like I said, more tax revenue. Just all we have to do is more properly to, uh, fund the IRS and we'll get those benefits. It's just good. And they're trying to make sure their wealthy donors and those at the very top of, their, of the economic ladder are able to more effectively cheat out of their taxes because the IRS doesn't have the resources necessary to prevent them from doing so. It's yet another example of the reality that the GOP is really, while they'll throw red meat to their base and they'll fight on the culture war and they'll call out Disney and they'll boycott Target and whatever, behind the scenes... What they're actually working to do is benefit those who have plenty already, <laughs> who are very wealthy, very powerful. That's who they're working for, not all of the voters who put them into power. It is so enraging. One more clip I'll show you here as we wrap up the um, GOP's response to this debt ceiling agreement. And this is uh, a member of the budget committee, Republican representative, let's see here, Stephanie Bice who got asked about the fact that Chip Roy is speaking out against this deal. A fellow Republican is not for this, and this was her response. Day, there are two choices. You either default and put us on a you know, path to fiscal chaos, or you support spending cuts, significant ones. And for me, it was an easy choice. Well, for some Republicans, that's not an easy choice, and some are leaning towards the former of what you just laid out there, of those two options. As we heard from Lauren, Congress, uh, Congressman Chip Roy is a no thus far, and he tweeted that he knows of multiple Republicans who are also a no because, to use his terminology, this bill is a, quote, turd sandwich. 
What is your message to those Republicans? Have you spoken to him directly? You know, I haven't spoken to Chip Sh directly, but he certainly has a difference of opinion, and he's entitled to that. Um, he has a vote just like I have a vote. And look, I think that spending cuts are important. You know, when Kevin McCarthy first... Okay. So there's that. We'll see how it all works itself out. Um, but we have very close a clear deadline that we have to have this sorted out by. So this debacle has to work itself out um, by the early days of June. Otherwise, we will default on our debt. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to be a part of what makes this show possible, plus get access to the full video version of the show hours before all the clips are uploaded to the YouTube channel, plus get access to the exclusive members only bonus show on the weekends. You can do so by going to lukebeasleyshow.com slash membership. That is lukebeasleyshow.com slash membership. And there's a link in the description.